Hi Sharks, my name is Diana, and today we are here to raise $1 million to provide summer instruction for 1,200 students. Hi Sharks, my name is Spencer Haar. Perhaps the biggest opportunity gap that we see comes during the summer. Students from high-income neighborhoods are attending rigorous academic programs, playing on traveling sports teams, or going on great vacations with their families. Access to such enriching and academic opportunities during the summer leads to a lot of growth. But students in low-income neighborhoods, the students that we serve, they don't have access to these same opportunities. They may be staying at home, going to work with their parents, or watching over younger siblings during the summer. And this leads to summer learning loss. In fact, research shows that summer learning loss attributes for half of the achievement gap. I've actually experienced this firsthand. I'm actually fortunate enough to be working um, in the same community and school that I grew up in. My parents have always valued the importance of education, especially because they were only able to attain a middle school education, not by choice. My parents, though, are very hardworking. My dad's a gardener, my mom's a housekeeper. As a student, I've always struggled with math. And during my early elementary years, my school did not have access to resources to support me in math let alone my parents could not afford to pay for tutors or send me to summer camps. But it wasn't until after my fourth grade year that my school partnered with the city to provide a math and science program that really helped boost my math skills, but most importantly, my confidence to feel prepared for that following school year. In fact, that confidence led to me being determined in pursuing a college degree and eventually becoming a first-generation college student from San Jose State with a degree in sociology with a concentration in criminology. <laughs> Our program runs five days out of the week, eight hours a day, four to five weeks. The first part of the day is focused on academic instruction. And it's taught by a credentialed teacher with the support of a Boys and Girls Club staff and a high school volunteer. The next part of the day, our students participate in hands-on learning through an innovative mindset in art, science, engineering, and outdoors. At BGCP, we believe in the power of partnerships and in leveraging scarce resources. In the spirit of these beliefs, we have developed a unique and innovative four-way partnership. First, we at BGCP provide most of the staff, many of which are already in place during the school year. The marginal cost, which is very low, is only for additional hours for part-time instructors. We also coordinate the overall program and provide the execution and expertise needed to run a summer program of this size. Second, our district partners provide us with wonderful school facilities needed to run a quality summer program. We get to access their school sites for free. In addition, they provide us with teachers to run morning instruction with a curriculum that emphasizes math and literacy and is tightly aligned with what the students receive during the school year. The districts also provide us with the data that we need to evaluate the impact our summer program has on our students. How many people here have sent their kids to Camp Galileo? All right, well then as you all know, Camp Galileo has one of the most fantastic and engaging summer camps in the entire country. They provide their students with hands-on learning activities that really grow an innovator's mindset. We took a look at what Camp Galileo was doing with their kids and realized we were not going to be able to build anything better from the ground up, and so we decided to partner with them. Through this partnership, Camp Galileo provides us with their curriculum. We also use the same materials in our program that the students at Camp Galileo get to use. And they even come in and run trainings with our instructors so that we can provide a really high quality program and implement it just as they do. Thanks, Camp Galileo. We have them right there in the back at table 15. <laughs> and the fourth part of this secret summer recipe, we have volunteers. We recruit 110 high school volunteers to intern with us during our summer, uh, summer program. These are high school students that care deeply about their community and really want to make a difference. With the extra hours that they bring into our classroom, we're able to lower the student to instructor ratio to an extremely low six to one. And with this small group instruction, 
we can provide targeted and differentiated instruction to the students and really hit it where we need to with their education. And this is not just a one-way street. Our volunteers are really growing through this opportunity to work with students from different backgrounds as well. By coming in and building relationships with people who they might not otherwise interact with, we're really creating a sense of shared community and building a stronger community. Hi, my name is Alex Quesada, and I'm the principal. Last summer, I was the principal uh, during one of these summer programs. And I have to tell you, this is the real stuff. As an instructional leader, we're often looking for a few things. We're looking for, one, engagement in the curriculum. And what we see here in this partnership is exactly that. It's no longer an either or. It's no longer a tight academic program or an enrichment program. With this, we actually get both. And so what students see and their experience is seamless. And it's a well-integrated curriculum from the morning all the way into the afternoon. The second thing that I look for as an instructional leader um, are what teachers are doing. What are the educators doing? And as I walk through the hallways and as I walked in the classrooms, what you see is low student to teacher ratios. That means that we're very, very effective in actually reaching the students and giving the students what they need, meeting their needs, and pushing them forward. And students greatly benefit from that. I think the last thing that stands out in this partnership for me, and um, having gone through this program myself, is the partnership doesn't end at the summer. This actually extends throughout the school year. Not just for the teachers, not just for the educators, because we interact with Boys and Girls Club throughout the entire year, but also for the students. That momentum that we build during the summer, that carries forward to the fall. Students think school is fun. Our kids like engaging, they love learning, and that's one of the huge, huge benefits, and it's a tremendous asset to our program um, to have Boys and Girls Club partner up with this, and it's a benefit to the school. So as Alex and Spencer mentioned, the cost for student is low, $800 to be exact. So what's the return on your $1 million investment? 1,200 students will receive 150 hours of learning time through small group instruction. This will then result into an 85% of students avoiding summer learning loss. In addition, our students will enhance the level of learning and boost their confidence to feel prepared for that upcoming fall, just like I did after fourth grade when I was able to access a summer program. And by bringing students from different neighborhoods together, they will share an experience that will not only build, but strengthen our communities. So, so sharks, sharks, any hooks. questions? <laughs> So I have a question. So you talked about impact. How do you measure the impact on these kids? Sure, I'll, I'll say a little bit about this. Um, so we're constantly measuring student growth through our assessment. So usually or typically what we do is we measure um, where students are in terms of their academic at the end of the academic year. And then we measure them again at the end of the summer and into the fall. And so that's how we're actually verifying um, whether or not we're actually making an impact with the students. So it's careful measurements along the way throughout the year as well. And what is that telling you? Is any, any top line sort of insights that you could share? Um, yes. Um, summer school is good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, we, we at the very least, um, students maintain growth. In other words, they don't they slip don't regress. back. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's the key. Um, ideally, uh, they actually make a little bit of growth. And, and so we've seen some cases where they actually progress a little bit higher than they, sh than they typically expect, but that's great. We'll take that any day. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. So have there been other summer school programs, and what's their success been, and, and what did you learn from what others have done? I've only been in this community and working here for a few years, but as far as I know, we, we do it the best. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to do it? If you don't mind, I'll just step in since I've been here a little bit longer. <laughs> so 
we, uh, this is interesting, the history of this is quite interesting. Uh, we used to run the summer program similar to this ourselves for many years. We actually hired the credential teachers ourselves and the district ran one in parallel. Uh, the districts was just in the morning, they didn't have the afternoon. And so after a while, after a few years, I got together with the superintendent and I was like, this is crazy, why are we duplicating services? So we merged the two together. That enhances the academic part because the schools does that, that part better. We bring the enrichment so together we could serve more students uh, cheaper, better, and faster basically. So that, that's the biggest difference. There are some other programs as well that are very niche. There's no program that's anywhere, not even a 10% of the scale of what we're talking about. Uh, there's some summer programs called A-Learn or Silicon Valley Education Foundation. What they do is they target kids who are right at the bubble of being proficient in math, give them a very intense math experience, and then get them over proficient. Um, but again, it's only for a handful of kids, very selective, um, and just nowhere near to scale. So this is investing in the program that you just described? Yes. Thank you. This is a program that's been going for two years, and we want to keep it going uh, because it's proven so effective. Of the $1 million um, dollar investment, how do you deploy the capital against using technology to create efficiency and create some scalability and repeatability? to help you beyond just the hands-on learning approach with the student-to-teacher relationship? I'll address that one as well. And unfortunately, <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to just be really direct about it, and it's not gonna be the answer you may wanna hear. Uh, you know, I worked for Exodus Communications, it's all about scalability and leverage, and I, I came into this business thinking we could do that and bring more of that. With these kids, if you think about our own kids, and if they're struggling in school, what they need is they need that hands-on human interaction and that attention. And we're driving the costs down by being cost effective by partnering with the districts and by getting volunteers and leveraging Camp G that has already invested you know, all the fixed costs of developing the curriculum. But still, at the end of the day, it's one classroom, one teacher, one staff, and a volunteer. And so I can't tell you that there's a real silver bullet here about doing things more effectively. It does, unfortunately, when it comes to raising kids, my experience has been it's not the highest leverage activity. Uh, there are people out there that talk about scalability. Uh, we, if we gave every kid a Chromebook, that would help. I don't see that personally. I see the kids needing that human connection. Um, most of the kids need that human connection. Um, I think just to add to that, um, as Peter had mentioned, our program is not selective. And um, how we make that work is through the differentiated learning that we do through the small group instruction. So I think that's really important where each and every student, regardless of where they're at, we're gonna attempt to help them where they're at and meet them where they're at and hopefully um, influence and, and with their growth, with their academic growth. And can I chime in too? Um, one of the things that we've learned about research and uh, specifically research in education is that the biggest, uh, the highest leverage tool that we can use is the expectation from educators that all children can learn and that they deserve the best. And I think part of the power in this relationship that we have is that we all believe in that, um, really, really believe in it to the extent that we bring that energy and we bring that dynamic to the classroom. And that's part of the reason why this works so well is that we are on the same page about our kids and our community. And when we get us together in the same room, some good stuff going on there. So uh, an addendum to Don's question, uh, two-part question. First, if you had more than a million dollars, how would you spend it based on the data? And second part to that question, if you had less, what would be the first thing you would cut, the last thing you would cut? Um, I think if we're, we had an extra million dollars, I would say um, we would probably extend the program um, right now, it's running four to five weeks. We would extend the program. And then also, um, we feel there's demand for more kids, to serve more kids, approximately um, 500 across the different communities. So that's... This year, last year, the program was five weeks. This year, it has to be four weeks because the district has... There's constraints with facilities, and they have to fix up facilities, and that's really suboptimal. So next year, we're going to go back. We, just, we have to figure out how to get back to five weeks. So I totally agree with that. If we had to cut... Um, I think that 
we would have to cut the size of the program at this point. Um, I mean, we've already pretty much cut out field trips. So one area that the staff keeps asking about is if we had more money, they would do more field trips. Uh, we take our kids, right, on field trips. Um, a lot of these students that we serve don't get field trips. But we've already pretty much cut that out. Um, and you, you can't really, we could get rid of a certified teacher and just have a you know, $20 an hour person. That would save money. But the feeling is that the certified teacher adds so much value that we would, we would shrink the program size. So awesome pitch. Love the energy, love the coordination at the end of the, you know, <laughs> pulling it together. So fantastic. My question is, one of the things I'm most compelled by is the ratios, which is just incredible and, and awesome to see. Um, but I'm sitting here saying, I have a hard time managing millennials in my job, and you're managing teenagers, <laughs> which is really pretty exceptional. So how do you do that? How do you recruit these high school students? How do you train them? How do you keep them engaged throughout the summer? Uh, we actually have a, someone who's, you know, we have a volunteer coordinator who goes out and recruits at different schools. We've had students come um, from as far as Los, Gat Los Gatos to come mm -hmm. to our and volunteer summer programs. And I think there's, there's that um, need and want and that of, of wanting to feel like they are contributing in some way and supporting students in different neighborhoods that are different from theirs and with kids who maybe normally they don't interact with, right? Um, I've, I've had students or high school students who've actually volunteered every single summer of their high school years um, and eventually also have come back as wanting to be summer instructors um, and work for us. So for those particular volunteers who keep coming back, it's that connection to the students that they build and our kids always look forward to seeing them every single summer. And as a matter of fact, we also have a few who make time during the school year um, to volunteer, you know, after school. That's really great. Um, having had worked with a lot of these high school students last summer, I can tell you that they're highly motivated. Um, yeah. They have purpose. They know why they're there. Um, so that makes them super coachable. Um, it makes them team players. Um, and because we're all on the same page, it's very easy for us to talk to them, to train them. And the energy and enthusiasm they bring feeds our veteran teachers. And they yeah. need that. And it, it, and it becomes this kind of cycle where they're both benefiting from each other's energy and expertise, um, which is really neat. I think we're also, um, just to add to that, we're hoping that some of these teenagers go off and maybe become teachers That's and come right. back and teach in our communities, especially given the teacher shortage, you know, Absolutely. around, especially yeah. nationally. So, you know, hopefully that sparks an interest too. Um, Terrific. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah.